Graves Motorsports Velocity Stack Kit for the 2018 through 23 Ninja 400. This is a really cool kit, simple to install. Thing I like about it is when you install these stacks on a completely stock motorcycle, you can pick up 6% power on the big end. And that's a, that's, that's, a, that's a really nice increase. You can see there's two stacks, they're different lengths. And we'll go into more detail in a little bit. The first thing you're gonna do is remove the seat. Remove the passenger seat. So we can get this little tab here, it's a little pull cord. And that'll allow us to lift the driver's seat off. Set that to the side. And you get a 10 millimeter. And we'll remove these two bolts that hold the gas tank down. four millimeter and we're going to remove these side panels on the right and left. Careful not to lose your little plastic washers here. You need those so it doesn't dig into the bodywork when you tighten them up. These side panels seem a little bit tough, but you just got to get your hand back in here and lift. You see how it has these little tabs here, and they just pop right off. You can see it locks in here and here on these four rubber grommets. Then we're going to remove these two allens. And that goes right into the gas tank. We're going to hit this push pin, lift that out. And there's a vent line on this side, you can see. Usually just pull that right off. Don't lose your little clip. You can just set that to the side right here for now. And we're gonna get our handy roll of duct tape. And we're gonna use this to prop up the fuel tank so we don't smash our fingers when we're trying to disconnect the fuel pump. The first thing we're gonna do is pop the clip on the fuel line. Just lift that off at the pit. And then slide the fuel line straight out. Now be careful to only to just wiggle it a little bit and pull it straight out. It's nice if you put a rag there, it'll uh, stop the fuel from getting all over the place. But once you have that off, now you can lift the tank up a little bit here. Pop the duct tape on there. Come around the side. And reach in. And you 
use your pick to disconnect the fuel pump. There's just a little clip that holds that in. That's right in here on the female side. If you just lift it up a little bit, this will pop right off. Now the fuel tank's ready to remove. And you just pull straight back with it. Comes out of those two rubber plugs right there. To remove the air box, you know, first take this 10 millimeter head screw on. Careful not to lose your washer here. They stick to this rubber, so I like to just give it a little pop and make sure you take the washer with you. And then there are two three millimeter Allens on either side of the air box. And you can see it right in here. You see that in there? So we're gonna remove those. We're not gonna take them out completely. Just gonna loosen them up about 10 turns or so. Next, air temp sensor. There's a little tab on the back. Just push down on that. Move it back, straight back. Next, fresh air vent. This is from the AIS. So we'll just reach in here, grab that connector. I like to use a pair of long nose just to kind of Grab the edge of it and just give it a little nudge and it'll pop right off for you. Now there's one more, there's one more hose we gotta do. It comes from the crankcase breather. You gotta sneak down on this side. I like to leave the, the hose attached to the air box and I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, this is really tight. What I like to do is get the clip with my hand and then I use these long needle nails just to Get a little leverage to just push that hose right off. And the reason why I like to take it off down there, and you want to be careful when you lift it up now. Let's see. There's this little clip, but the reason why I like that is the, the way this is timed here. If you just make a little mark here with a felt pen, and when you, after we're done doing our work with the air box, you'll know exactly how this is supposed to be timed and it'll drop right back on when you slide it back in. Makes the job much easier. So we got the air box off. Let's just put a rag over our intake track so nothing falls down in there. And, uh, and keep that, keep any dirt or anything from getting in there. The next step is going to be to remove all of these screws that hold the air box together. And we're also going to remove the, this uh, air temp sensor. So with a Phillips head screwdriver we'll do that. Yeah, clear a little bit of space here. We got some room to work. air temp sensor first. And be careful not to uh, drop this or bash it around. It, it, is, a, it is a little sensitive, so uh, that's an important part of the motorcycle for the fuel injection system. And these are just like wood screws, so they come out pretty easily. When you go to put them back in, so you just when you set them back in the hole, if you want, just turn them till you feel them click. 
and then go forward and then you can just spin them right in. I see a lot of guys that just, you know, re-thread them because of the type of screw it is. It's like a wood screw, so you just, you'll just cut new threads if you, if you don't do that. Little tip. layer and then ready to remove the top. Now that we have the screws, the air temp sensor and the breather vent removed from the air box to lift the lid, we'll, we're going to remove these uh, stacks. That's the way the stock ones are. Nice. Pretty, pretty cool setup, but this is going to be a little better. Uh, one thing I want you to note is how these are, these, these little clamps, they go on the nipples here. Lock that in place, so you've got this positioned. Not so that when you put them back on, you can easily get to them. That over. Now to remove these, you just need to give them a firm pull, and you can slide them right out. Now they're a little more difficult to put in than they are to take out, but you'll you'll get it. I'll just give it a nice firm pull. Stock stacks around. Now, uh, flip this over. I like to um, use a little bit of FC1 or silicone spray, something a little bit slippery, just for to help get these to slide in. Now, you notice the long stack was in the left side, and the short stack was in the right side. With the stock setup, uh, with the stock pipe and everything else stock, no mapping, no, no exhaust pipe, no other modifications, we're going to run the short stack on the right side, and I mean the long stack on the right side and the short stack on the left side. So, and you'll you'll know that it's right because this these little tabs line up. One side has a, a tab on one, and the other one has two. You can see the same thing. The two go on either side of the pin and the one goes into the center. So you kind of want to just give this a little fold. Hopefully you've got strong fingers. But you can leverage this in here. And get that in. So you can spin it. See how that tab lines up? See that? Now, once again, this is for the stock setup. Because when I'm done with this video, I'm going to show you how you can use these stacks with the, for racers with a, a full exhaust system, a, a map PCU, and a modified airbox to gain a bunch of power. In, in that case, we put the long stack on the left and the short stack on the right. But we'll talk about that later. Get a little bit of lube on there. There we go. And 
You see that top lines there? Done. Now, the next trick to this setup, <clears throat> in case you never thought about it, these don't really pull air from here. They pull air from here. That's how they work. So if we take this and set this down on top, you're going to notice that the, the, the lid doesn't close. Right? Well, you could if you forced it. Right? But that's not what we want to do. So there's some ridges that are on the inside of the top box. See these ridges here? We're going to remove those ridges. I'm going to show you how to do that. Take the box cutter. It's nice to have a locking one. Just get that far enough open so it won't cut too deep. And all we're going to do is we're just going to scribe a nice little line right into the corner of each of these. Not straight in, but at an angle. Yeah, like this. Yeah. And you only need to do it to about this point here, right? So you're just you're just scribing a little line right along the bottom of this, but you're putting it in at an angle. And then you're going to grab a pair of pliers. It's nice to have a pair that are sort of flat here, and you just give it a little wiggle. And then you can just break it right out. And you can do that without damaging the rest of the air box. And depending on your patience, you can come back in here with a sanding wheel if you really want. Or yeah, we did that. So they, you could come back in here and smooth this out, but it really doesn't change the power outcome. What you do want to do is make sure you get rid of any of the burrs or anything that's left over that might be floating around because you don't want that inside the airbox when you're done. So I'm going to remove these all the way across here and only to this point. When I'm done with that, you'll see that this thing will just, it'll just drop right, right on. Now that I've got all of those out, this thing will just drop right on. That's how you know you've done the job correctly. That puts those stacks so that they're right up against the roof. There you go. Now we can now we can reinstall. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our air temp sensor back in. Same technique I told you earlier before about the other ones. Back it up till you feel it click, and then just spin it right in. Flip this over. Now see, now I didn't have this all the way in here. You see that? Gotta give that. Gotta make sure it's seated all the way in and sealed. In there correctly. Now we're going to put our clamps on. Remember, I talked about these. You'll know they're right because you're, the head of the Allen will be facing this kind of direction. You don't want to do this twice. And we got a little mark. Oh, there we go. That's how this was. Put the baby back on there. And I like to put this, I took it off with this on here, which made it easier to work on on the bench, but when I go to put it back on, I, I like to put this on separately and then install this afterwards. I'm gonna guide this, guide this hose down here. Don't, don't knock your 
clip off while you're doing that. Let's get it right back down through the wiring where it came out. And here's why I like to put this on this way. This way I can look down the port here, down the stack, and make sure I haven't pinched the rubber or something when I was reinstalling it. I want to make sure it's down and seated all the way. Once it's down and seated all the way, you can give it a little wiggle. I'm going to put this screw in. Next, I'm going to tighten the allens. Now, you don't need to tighten these things until they won't turn anymore. Just snug them up. Clips on. Now I'm going to reach down here and I'm going to put the hose back on. The breather. Use my pliers to give me some support here. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole thing. Make sure you get that on correctly because that's a crankcase breather. Okay, next. Put our airbox lid on. I like to come and connect the air temp sensor right away as soon as I put the lid on. And the reason why is this is pretty common for people to forget about connecting this. And if you turn the key switch on without this connected, you'll get an error code. So I like to get it on right away. Plus you have to take the gas tank back off if you forget it. So you feel it click. Now, don't just jam them all down at once. It's kind of like, I like to do a cross pattern. Make sure it's seated down nicely. And then I'll go back in and just snug them all up. See a lot of guys do this with little electric tools. You could do that, but you're always risking stripping out the plastic air box if you do that. I like to be able to feel it. it takes a little longer.
Again, these don't need to be too tight either. They're not going to come loose. So just, just snug them up. Now I've double checked all my work. You know, my bolts are tight, the clamps are snug, the air temp sensor is hooked back up. I'm ready to put the fuel tank back on. When I talked a little bit earlier about uh, using some lube on the rubber to get it to slide in, these, these little push rubbers that are here, here, um, there's, there's four of them on each, each side, and these that go into the gas tank. I like to use a little shot of this SE1, just enough to, you know, it's, meant to shine stuff up, it makes it nice and slippery. And that way when I'm putting this stuff back together, you know, these parts just slide right back together. And it also helps protect the rubber. And I just do it a little bit on my finger. It makes it easy to distribute it without making a mess. Where's my other one? Mm -mm -mm. Okay, there we go. That one, this one. And then these four over here. Okay. Oh, the other two are gas tank. So it's, when you're lining this up, it's a little bit tricky, but there's plastic here, and you don't want to scratch your tank. So just go in slow here to get those little nipples lined up. You can feel them line up. And then these tabs are going to go over the top of that. You got to trust the duct tape roll back out. We're going to connect the fuel pump wire first. There's a little spot down in here where it can just clips back in. And then the fuel line, can't really do until we get our duct tape out. So I'm just going to pop down, flip that up. Got the fuel tank. Now you've got the fuel line here. I like to shift the tank over all the way to the right so I get a little bit of extra line here and then you can get this going on to this little nipple top throttle bodies. Now you want to make sure you've got this straight. If you don't have it straight it won't go back on. So a little bit of fuel on the line so it's lubed because there is there is rubber in there that it seals with and you got to push. You have to give it a pretty good push make sure it's on there and you'll feel it click now the way you know for sure it went all the way in is if you go to push this red safety clip back on and it doesn't go in you don't have it on all the way it won't go back back in until it slips over that so that's how and then just give it a little pull to make sure you're, you got it right the last thing you want is that fuel line coming out coming off And we'll hook our uh, breather line up over here, which we talked about before. Still there, still got our little clip. Baby back on. Make sure it's not pinched. Okay. Next is to put the screws into these side panels that mount to the gas tank and put the side panels on. Yeah. Two short allens that go into the fuel tank here.
push pins. They're pushed in now from taking them out. Just pop them back so they're standing up. They'll drop right in and make them flush. Next would be the side panels. Where we're going to do this is this little tab, this little tip right here, and that little clip right there. Those are kind of critical in this first step of installing. This clip goes up into this triangle groove here. See that? And then just this little edge fits in right back here behind the bodywork. I like to just fit this in there and then slide this up. And then as I'm pushing in, so that, you know, that's lining up all those four little drops. You gotta just get that hooked right up inside there and you'll feel it click. That's in and this is in. All your push pins are in. Now you can install the screws. Short screw goes to the back. screw with a plastic washer it goes in here. Now this one goes into a rubber well nut. So you just want to get it tight enough that it's good and snug. But not so much crushing. And you do the same thing on the other side. Pop it in. That goes right in. So I told you earlier in the video that we were going to talk about setting the airbox up for a racing situation where you want to make a lot more power than just putting a set of velocity stacks in a stock motorcycle. So when you're going to do this, that you would be doing this with a full system, an aftermarket air filter, and we'd be modifying the airbox. And you can see where we've cut out the bottom of this box here around this hole. You can remove these two snorkels that would normally go in here. And you can cut this out by marking this with a felt pen in the little corners, drilling them, and then using a small hacksaw or a hot knife and trimming that. And that's how I did it was with a hot knife. <clears throat> we had a DNA air filter into the air box, which allows a lot more airflow. And the air is dispersed into the box differently than if you only had the two snorkels in place and you had the stock air filter. So in this case, with the full system, and the airbox modifications, we run the long stack on the left and the short stack on the right. And it's really easy to tell that you've got it right for that application because you normally have the single rubber piece going between the two nipples that stick up out of the airbox on the left side. But we've, ju we've just swapped those. And so you just run those right up against the little nipples and this one on either side of that nipple. And you can reassemble the air box. Now remember, this is going to require mapping. So we provide a special map where you can send your ECU in and have it mapped to go with Graves Works to exhaust. And we'll show you a dynograph on this in a minute. It's really, really good. <laughs> 